is Tim Grange and welcome to another episode of Phronesis. Today I want to talk to us about something that is extremely sensitive. I want to talk to us about the effect of loss. We all experience loss. Ever since man fell from grace and fell from glory, loss has become an inevitability. And when I talk about loss, I'm talking about the loss of a marriage, the loss of a loved one, the loss of business, loss of a career. I'm even talking about the loss of physical health. Inevitably, at some point in time, no matter how perfect you are, no matter how much of God you love or how much you are aware that God loves you, you will face loss inevitably. If we don't understand how to manage loss, its impact could redefine our lives forever. With what I do for a living, both, both as a pastor and as a life coach, I tend to meet a lot of individuals who are living life against the backdrop of unhealed trauma. When you live life against the backdrop of unhealed trauma, you are actually unaware of the way the trauma has changed you or the loss in this case has changed you. I want to briefly put on your table some of the, the things that occur and some of the things we must pay attention to when you are dealing or when you are coming out of a loss situation, whether it's the loss of a loved one, whether it's the loss of a phenomenal relationship, whenever you are coming out of loss or you are going through the, the emotions of loss, you need to pay attention to these things I'm about to share with you. Stay tuned. This is going to help you. One thing that needs to be looked at the minute you are experiencing loss, again, any kind of loss, is the fact that loss often comes to distract you. One of the powers of loss is its ability to distract you. What do I mean? Let me, let me read the scripture to you. Um, so, so, so the children of Israel, uh, well, uh, David's army was going up against the armies of the children of Israel. He was not yet king over Israel and Judah. And Asahel, who happened to be the younger brother of Joab, was chasing after the general of the army of Israel. His name was Abner. Abner looked back, saw Asahel coming and says to Asahel, stop chasing me. Asahel kept on coming. He says to Asahel, put on some armor. Uh, Asahel refused. Asahel was quite cocky and kept on chasing him. And ultimately, Abner turned round and killed Asahel. Let me show you this. In verse 22, 2 Samuel 2, 22, it says, And Abner said again to Asahel, Turn thee aside from following me. Wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? How then should I hold up my face to Joab thy brother? Howbeit he refused to turn aside. Wherefore Abner, with the hinder end of the spear, smote him under the fifth rib. So Abner kills Asahel. That the spear came out behind him. And Asahel fell down and died in the same place. And look at this. Look at what happened. And it came to pass that as many as came to the place where Asahel fell down and died, they stood still. So as Asahel was chasing Abner, that means the battle was against Judah of Israel. David was about to win the war. So Asahel was chasing. The rest of Asahel's army or David's army was coming behind Asahel. When Abner killed Asahel, when the army got to where Asahel died, instead of continuing the chase after Abner, the Bible says when they got to the place of that loss, they stopped. Whenever you experience a loss, one of the things, and it's difficult, but believe me, it is so necessary and I've been there. It is important for you to ask yourself, what was I doing? What was I busy with? What was I engaged with before this crisis showed up? Because very often a loss shows up to distract you from what you've been pursuing. If you have started re-engaging in your business, maybe that's when the loss came so that the money that you had set aside for you to advance your business, you now have to use for a funeral. You need to pay attention to what you were pursuing before the loss showed up. Losses. If we don't manage them well, like we see here, when they came to where the loss occurred, their pursuit stopped. What have you stopped because of the pain of the loss? What goal have you decided to shelve because of the pain of the loss? Again, it could be any kind of loss that you have experienced. Do not let, I, I pray for someone right now, that you will not let the pain of your loss distract you from the pursuit of your goals and of your dreams and of your visions. Let me talk to you about another effect of loss. Another effect of loss 
is the tendency when we experience loss to go into depression or to go into isolation. Did you get that? Where, where because of this loss, because of the pain, because, because of the sorrow you ex you're experiencing, you now begin to pull away from friends and family. You now begin to pull away from the things that you are supposed to be doing. Check this out. When the enemy is able to isolate you, he generally isolates you so that proper counsel, sources of encouragement are, are, are cut off from its source. And that way, he's able to flood your minds with, with greater feelings of, of, that, of that sense of, of sorrow, of that sense of depression. And ultimately, if, if unchecked, you will actually disconnect from any godly pursuit. What am I saying? You need to ensure that you deal with the impact of depression and isolation that loss has a tendency of introducing into your space. Let me read a very crazy scripture, all right? I, I, I mean no disrespect when I use that term. Proverbs 18 verse 1, the Amplified Version says, He who willfully separates and estranges himself from God and from man seeks his own desire and pretext to break out against all wise and sound judgment. Did you get that? He says that he breaks out against all wise and sound judgment. If you are uh, currently in a state of isolation, maybe you just stumbled on this particular broadcast, I want to encourage you. That is the enemy separating you from sources of help. I remember not too long ago, actually last year, end of last year, I lost a sister of mine and, and my heart was broken. It was almost like two years in a row that I'd lost a loved one. It was, my heart was broken. My family was in mourning. My, 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 my mother was crying. My aunts were crying. It was a crisis scenario. I, I had moments where I'll just break out in, in tears. I mean, I could be laughing this minute and something will hit my mind, a memory will hit my mind and I'll break out and I will be in sorrow and I will weep. But one thing I had learned over the years is that in as much as I felt this need to pull away from everybody, I felt this need not to want to go to church anymore. I felt this need not to want to be surrounded by friends and family and, and this need to just want to cover my head in my bed and just and just stay isolated. I understand understood that if I did that, in as much as that's how I felt, I will worsen my scenario. So guess what? Even though I did not want to be surrounded by people, I kept myself exposed to people. I kept myself in a position where my friends could speak to me. Some of the things that were saying, I did not want to hear them, but I knew I needed to hear them. I kept myself going to church. There was at least once or twice I couldn't preach. I was, I was in chaos, but I knew I needed to be in the house of God. God, God had blessed me with a wonderful church. I knew that if I wasn't there, they will understand. They will pray for me. I understood that the system will continue without me. But I also understood that if I allowed myself to be isolated, cut off from the presence of God, cut off from the people of God, it was only a matter of time till my, my isolation turned to depression and my depression maybe even escalated to suicidal thoughts. If you were out there, I see I'm out of time out there and you are experiencing the effect of loss. I pray that the hand of God and the counsel of the Holy Spirit will attend to you. Do not let it distract you. Do not let it isolate you. Do not let it keep you in that dark cloud of depression. I break the stronghold of the enemy riding on the wings of your current loss, causing you to experience decay, causing you to experience um, depression. I set you free in the name of Jesus. Next week, I will continue on this thought on the effect of loss, but I declare that right now you are set free. This has been Tim Gray, senior pastor of the city of Zion Santin, wishing you a, a grace and joyful season in our year of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bye for now. <laughs>